Wow, look at this day, guys. Isn't this a beautiful day? It's a beautiful day to ask you a question. What is fluency? What does it mean to be fluent in a language? And also, what does it mean to be a native speaker? Okay, I want to read you a funny comment that someone left on my channel. Uh, I'll just read it here on my... It's bright out here, guys. I don't know if I can even read my comment here. So this person says, Sorry, Mark. You are one of the best. Top-notch. Second to none. But wondering whether you are native or not. In terms of pronunciation or grammar, it's perfect. But in terms of fluency and speech and vocabulary, I'm not sure. No hard feelings. I have probably lost touch with reality. All right. <laughs> so whoever left this comment, thank you for the comment. It's funny. I, I find it funny. I don't know if it's a man or a woman who left this comment, but um, what do you think, guys? Do you think I'm a native English speaker? Smash like if you think I'm native. Smash the thumbs down button if you think I'm not native, all right? So I'll tell you, the answer is yes, I am native, right? Um, it's the language, en English is the language I grew up speaking at home, right? It was the language of my childhood, you know? That, that, that's the language we spoke in our home. We spoke English. So yeah, I, and in, in fact, that's my only language. That's the only real language I speak, guys. I can speak a bit of this, a bit of that, but, but really English is the, is the only language I really speak well. <clears throat> okay, but according to this person, this person is wondering, hmm, is Mark native? Now why? What did he or she say? Fluency. Is Mark fluent? I know Mark's pronunciation. He's, what did he say? Let's just assume he's a... I'll just call him a he. I don't know what pronoun. These days you never know what pronouns to use with people, right? Um, what's the name? Alamer... Alamer... Alamer? <clears throat> I don't know. Tell me in the comments, guys, if this is a male name or what's your guess? I have no idea. I don't know sometimes, guys who my, if my commenters are, I don't know what gender they are. Sometimes I just guess, okay? So, <clears throat> so this person is saying that in terms of, of pronunciation and grammar, my English is perfect. Well, realistically, in reality, if someone's pronunciation and grammar are perfect, that means they're a native speaker, guys. Easy. We can just solve it right there, right? I would say if someone's pronunciation and grammar are perfect, that means in reality that they're a native speaker, right? Now, could it be that someone's pronunciation and grammar are perfect, but they weren't native? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. Like, you know, is it possible for me to learn Spanish and have a perfect accent and perfect grammar? I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Right. I've met many, many Spanish speakers. Um, I know they're Spanish because they have an accent. Uh, I've met many German speakers, many, you know, Hindi speakers, many, every, 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 all, all places around the world, Filipinos and, you know, Dutch people and uh, you know people from South Africa and you know, a lot of different people. Okay, you know you can tell you can tell um, based on their pronunciation. That's a hard thing to change, guys. Like even if you work really hard um, at your pronunciation, that's almost it's almost impossible to get perfect pronunciation. 
It doesn't mean people shouldn't try. Yeah, they should try to get it if they want it, if they want to have really, really good pronunciation. It's possible. But is it possible to get it perfect? <sighs> Guys, that's, that's very hard. So just like, sure, maybe it's possible. There might be cases where a person's pronunciation and grammar are perfect and they're not a native English speaker. Yeah, that's maybe that's possible. But realistically, if someone's pronunciation and grammar are perfect, they're a native speaker. Okay, but the reason this person's wondering, wondering is because of fluency. Look what they say. They list five things here, okay? This doesn't really make sense to me. I want you to help me. Help me make sense of this, okay? They list five things here. They list um, <clears throat> pronunciation, grammar, fluency, speech, and vocabulary. Okay, now this is confusing to me because what is speech? Speech is words that you say from your mouth. And so speech is made up of pronunciation, vocabulary, and grammar, right? That's what speech is. So why, why is this person adding speech as another thing and fluency? Like, what is fluency? That's why I want to ask you, what is, what is fluency? I'm a bit confused here, guys. Would you say that all native English speakers are fluent? And are all fluent people native speakers? How would you define these words? Like, I would say a native speaker. If you have a different idea, let me know down in the comments. Would, wouldn't you say a native speaker is a speaker who has grown up in that language? Like from childhood, they spoke that language in their home, probably. That's what I would say is a native speaker. Now, it's possible that uh, maybe you had two languages in your home. If that's you, let me know down in the comments. How many languages did you speak in your home? Most people around the world speak one language. I mean, that's what they spoke at home. Let's say you, you speak Spanish, right? You're, that means when you were a child, you your parents both spoke Spanish. That was the, the main language in your home. It's usually people have one language in their home when they were kids. But it's possible to have more. Maybe let's say, you know, your your dad was Greek and your mom was Spanish. So you grew up speaking Greek and Spanish. Then you could say, I have two native languages, Greek and Spanish. Now imagine if your family lived in Japan. Right. Gosh, should I keep walking over there? There's someone sitting on that bench. I always avoid people, guys. <laughs> I don't want to go across the canal because it's warm. Now the sun's out. I think it's melting. I think the canal's melting, so I don't want to fall through the ice and die. So maybe I'll just keep standing on this rock in this nice sun. Look at that beautiful sun, guys. So let's say the family grew up in Japan. I mean, the family lived in Japan. So the child grew up with Japanese friends and all the child spoke was Japanese to his or her friends. But in the home spoke Greek and Spanish. Could you say that person is it, it, it speaks Japanese? Could you say that person is native in Japanese? Like right we're, we're, here we're not talking about skin color we're not talking about religion we're not talking about we're not talking about um like nationality although these things are all related to each other right usually like let's just take a take a, some some language let's say hindi okay you would probably be able to look at me and say mark is not a native hindi speaker why because you're making the judgment on the color of my skin and would it be a fair judgment? Yeah. Realistically, in, in life, we, 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 ha we evaluate the situations. And you would be correct. I'm, I, I, I'm not a native Hindi speaker. 
right? So you, you kind of look at me and you say, okay, Mark is a, okay, he's white skin, you know, he's from Canada. And in Canada, they're, like, are there native Hindi speakers born in Canada? Yes, because Indian families moved to Canada. I mean, you know, it's, con it's a confusing thing. It's a confusing thing, but just generally speaking, right, you know, we, we, we kind of, we make assumptions based on reality. And um, so I'm not sure why this person is questioning my, uh, is questioning my native status. What, el what else would I be? Would I be native German or native, you know, let me know. What, what do you think? What do you think? Um, but I would say for the family who lived in Japan, I would say the child would be, would be native in, I would say Greek, Spanish and Japanese. Depending, let's say the child went to school in Japanese. All his friends were Japanese. Everything he did in Japan was Japanese, but he grew up speaking uh, Greek and Spanish in, in the home. Well, then there's three languages that are native right but ge generally speaking um there's there's one right guys let's keep walking getting kind of bored standing on that rock so generally speaking uh which way should we go guys this way or well, let's go toward the sun all right that is beautiful sun so guys let me know your thoughts on this I just wanted to talk about it because it's 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 interesting and it's a, it's a good question actually because not all English teachers are native English speakers. There are many English teachers around the world who are maybe Chinese or uh, you know, maybe they I don't know. Are you an English teacher? You know where where are you from? What language did you speak when you were growing up? Okay. So it's an interesting question, and uh, I just wanted to I wanted to, to bring it up because I think it's an interesting topic, and I was kind of surprised that people would assume that I'm not a native English speaker, or that they would wonder. Okay, so in reality, okay, I would say to be realistic, if a person's uh, if a person's pronunciation and grammar are perfect. They're probably native, guys. They're probably native. And if they're not native, then does it really matter? Like, uh, flu okay, so let's talk about fluency. How would you define the word fluency? I would say a person who is fluent in English is very good in English. They might not be a native speaker, but they're very good. They can, I mean, they're all it's almost perfect it's almost perfect they can do everything they need to do they can make friends they can talk to people they can go to the bank they can uh, they can have deep conversations with people I would say that's a person who is fluent if you can have deep conversations about a range of topics then uh, you, you are fluent in a language and that's why I say I really only speak English because I can't have deep conversations in any other language. How many languages can you have deep conversations in? Let me know down in the comments. Me, it's just one. That's English, right? Now this person said, the, per the reason this person was questioning, I, I think my fluency was because of my vocabulary and speech. Those were the things he said, right? Well, how can my pronunciation and grammar be perfect, but my speech be not perfect? Then it must come down to my vocabulary, right? And I have to admit, my vocabulary is not great, guys. I don't have really advanced vocabulary. I don't have a huge knowledge of all the words in the English language. I don't know how many words I know. I think I've heard that, uh, you know, what is it, average native speakers of English know maybe 10,000 words? I, I, I don't know, I just remember hearing that somewhere. I might know like 10,000 words, guys. I don't know how many words I know. <laughs> how many words do you know? So, is it possible 
that a non-native English speaker would have better vocabulary than me? Yeah, absolutely. I've met many non-native English speakers who have great English, guys. It's really good. You know, it's, uh, it's better than mine. It's better than mine. But the difference is in those situations, those people that I've met who have better vocabulary than me, my pronunciation is better than theirs. Or I shouldn't say better. It's, it's just my pronunciation is more native-like than theirs. And uh, maybe my grammar is a little bit better. But even that, you know, I, you know like, let's take a child, okay? Think about a five-year-old kid. Is a five-year-old is a five-year-old kid a native speaker? Let's take one of these kids in one of these houses. Let's say you know, let's say that his parents speak English, and he goes to an English-speaking school, and all his friends speak English. He's five years old. Is he a native English speaker? Yeah, he is. He's a native English speaker. Now, is he fluent? Is a five-year-old child fluent in language? You know, sometimes with kids, they make grammar mistakes and their vocabulary is very limited. Like a mom might ask a kid, you know, did you go potty? Did you go potty? And the kid will say, yeah, I go I go to potty, right? Kids make those grammar mistakes when they're maybe like, I don't know, three, four, years old um, they're learning English right so we know that the past tense of go is went so we would say oh that kid made a grammar mistake um, so does that mean the kid is fluent well is the kid a native speaker yeah the kid is a native speaker but his fluency is uh, <laughs> his, it's getting there it's getting there Right? So, um, a potty is a little toilet, a kid's toilet, by the way, if you didn't know. To go potty means to use the bathroom. Okay, so, um, what do you think, guys, for a child? Let's say a four or five year old kid. Is that kid fluent in, in English? You know, uh, he may not be fluent yet, but I can tell you that he's going to be a lot more fluent than probably than uh, everybody else. Why? Because he's growing up in an English home, English society, English friends. Guys, there was a time 10 years ago when I was learning German and uh, I remember I had a friend. <laughs> I, I, I made a friend who was also learning German. My German was better than his German. But shortly after I met him, he started, uh, <laughs> he started dating a girl from Austria, a native German speaker from Austria. Uh, ultimately, he married her. And I remember at that time, thinking I, t I think I was I think I told him this I said look my German's better than your German now but I don't stand a chance against you in like a year or two years why because he's in relationship with a native German speaker you know so I knew I was better now but because of the environment he was in he was putting himself in relationship with a native German speaker and he was learning German. I, I was just like, there's no chance. I don't stand a chance against this guy. So um, with a child, four or five year old kid, even if the child's English is not great yet, that child will end up being fluent in English. For sure, it's guaranteed. All right. so. The more important thing isn't where you are right now in your English. It's where it's it's where you it's where you will be and where you could be 
depending on the situation, right? Like if I wanted to learn a language, I would marry someone from that language. That would be like, if I wanted to speak the best, like let's take Hindi, for example, if I wanted to learn how to speak perfect Hindi, I would probably move into, I, I, I would, I would, I would live with a family who speaks Hindi. I would live with them, you know, I'd, 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 I'd hear the parents speaking to their children. I'd hear the children speaking to their parents. I'd play with the kids, you know, hear what are the kids saying to each other? You know, I would do everything I, I would, I would live in India, right? I would probably marry an Indian woman that if I did those things, that guarantees me like the maximum, the maximum ability to get fluent, right? Because if you just learn a language from books and you have a teacher, like teachers are great. I mean, there's really no replacement for a good teacher. You have to have a good teacher if you want to learn too. But um, ultimately, if you want to be really fluent, almost like native, like you have to, you have to um, enter into that world and to interact with the different age groups. Because what often happens is, like I've, I've, I've noticed that people, when people learn English, they, they know English for certain contexts, but then like, let's say when they're interacting with kids, maybe they don't even understand the kids, or maybe they don't know what the kids, they're not familiar with what the kids are reading. They're not familiar with the children's songs. They're not familiar with, uh, or they don't understand elderly people. You know, they don't quite know how to understand them or what, because they've just become comfortable in that one, like in that comfort zone of their uh, English speaking, right? With maybe they interact with friends and uh, and their work, their, their workplace or, or their colleagues. But, you know, that's it maybe. And so, you know, if that's the case, then your language is pretty limited. So, um, guys, I don't know. I, I would say, I would say that, uh, fluency is, is really a kind of an open-ended term. Okay. If something is open-ended, that means you can kind of define it how you, how you want to define it. What is fluency to you? What does it mean to you? Um, you know, like there are a lot of people, let's say with speech, um, problems maybe they have some problem like they can't speak clearly they can't speak uh normally like like a lot of people maybe they can't maybe they can't speak at all let's say they're mute okay they cannot speak at all are they still a native speaker what if they like they can hear the language they can understand it perfectly they can write it perfectly i mean can you be a native writer and not a native speaker <laughs> like you know <laughs> that'd be a bit weird right like i would say if there's someone who who grew up in an english home in an english society had english friends but who cannot speak i would say they're a native speaker i would call them a native speaker even if they can't use their mouth to speak but maybe they can type they can read they can listen they can you know they're a native speaker, right? even though they don't speak at all. I would say they're a native speaker. So for this person who left the comment, guys, help me solve this problem. What do you think is really the core of the issue? Is what is it? What is it in my speech that might give someone the idea that I'm not a native speaker? Is it my low vocabulary? But even a child, like I said, that's why I used the example with a child. If a child has low vocabulary or, or maybe not perfect grammar, is the child a native speaker? Yeah, the child is a native speaker. So what's more important? Is it more important to be native 
or is it more important to be fluent? Guys, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't have the answers to these questions. But what I would say is like if a child is growing up in a language, they are destined for fluency. But if a person has become fluent without the native upbringing in the language, that person's fluency will probably reach a limit that the native speaker will will not reach that limit. Um, I, I don't know. Like the, like I said, with pronunciation, man, it's really, really hard to properly train your pronunciation. I've heard a lot of um, Russian and Ukrainian speakers who have tried really hard to work on their pronunciation. And they do great. It's really good. But I can still tell that they're Russian and, and they're, or they're Ukrainian, you know, I can tell that they're from that part of the world, right? Um, it's hard to get it just perfect. <laughs> it's really hard. And is that a goal that people should try to even achieve? What's the point? You know, if, if I could speak German, let's say with 90, 95%, you know, pronunciation, perfect pronunciation, Boy, that'd be a great achievement. I wouldn't try to get a hundred. What's the point? Is it to, is the point to pretend that you're someone you're not? Is that the point that you want to convince people that you're native? What's the point? You know, like a person can't change certain parts of their life. Certain things are pretty fixed, guys. Like for example, my skin color. You know, my 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 place of birth. I was born. In Alberta. Here's um, in Alberta. I was born in Alberta. Can I change that fact? No, even if I try as hard as I can to change that, well, it's something that happened in history. I can't change it, right? What about my skin color? I have pink skin. Can I change it? No, I can't change it, guys. It's pink. A lot of people say it's white. It's not white. That's white. Look at that, okay? So, guys, that's actually brown. Look at that. That's not white snow, that's brown snow. Let me go to a patch of white snow and you can tell the, you can see the difference, okay? Look at my hand here, all right? White, pink, white, pink. I don't know why people call, say the word white people. I'm not white, the people here aren't white, they're pink. We are pink. <laughs> Guys, I'm a pink. <laughs> I'm a pink skinned man. So, well, I don't know. What color would that be? What would you say? Salmon? Salmon colored? I don't know, guys. I'm not a color expert. So, you know, I don't know. These are interesting things to think about. Like, the, the important thing is that you can speak a, the language in a really a diverse set of situations and uh, and do it really well because pronunciation doesn't need to be perfect to be perfectly understandable okay that's the thing that you can actually learn to speak English perfectly you can have perfectly understandable per pronunciation you can have perfect pronunciation it just won't be exactly like um, it might not be exactly like mine right <clears throat> now, the thing is, usually native speakers can identify each other. So let's say I meet someone from that house and that house and that house. Okay, I would be able to tell, let's say, uh, you know, that person grew up in Canada, that person grew up in China, and that person grew up in, in India. And let's say they all speak fluent English. I would be able to tell who the native speaker is there, right? Like. You know, you can identify them, right? Just like if, you, if you're a native Portuguese speaker and let's say you have a friend who's a native Spanish speaker, but let's say your Spanish speaker can speak perfect Portuguese as well. Can you hear that? Can you hear the difference? Let me know down in the comments. I don't know the answer to that. Like if you're, you know, because I know a lot of, a lot of my subscribers are from Brazil or, uh, or Spanish speakers from 
let's say Mexico or Spain or other other countries I know Portuguese and Spanish have a lot of similarities can you hear the difference when you know like if 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 a, if if someone speaks Spanish fluently um and you're a Portuguese speaker uh, you grew let's say you you no sorry uh what am I trying to say if if you're if let's say you're a Portuguese speaker let's say you're in Brazil and a Spanish speaker comes to your country and they speak fluent Portuguese can you hear the accent can you hear a small accent difference I'm sure you can uh, most places are like this but the other thing too is that not all native speakers of a language have the same accent and that's another interesting concept is this idea of accent okay because like the British people or Irish or Scottish sometimes it's hard for me to understand them because their accent is so strong and their their vocabulary is a little bit different maybe even their grammar is a little bit different okay so like languages it's themselves can be a little bit diverse right so you've got British English you got American English Canadian English Australian English you know the accents are different um, but I can identify usually I can identify where a person is from in the English world uh, without asking them I can hear their accent like South African so I know the South African accent uh, Australian New Zealand I don't know if I'd be able to dis differentiate between Australian and and New Zealand I, I maybe I think so um, but British it's easy but even in Britain in one country there's so many different accents guys so like I said it's a bit hard it's a bit of a confusing topic um, I just thought this comment was was kind of funny um, and so I just thought I'd make a video about it um, this person says the last line of their comment says I have probably lost touch with reality yeah <laughs> I think so <laughs> guys I think that's 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 the uh, that is the that's the diagnosis right you came to dr. Mark for a diagnosis that's my diagnosis that yes you have lost touch with reality because anybody in their right mind will be able to tell that I am a native speaker even if my vocabulary is not the, as good as you know other people like most of the time most of the time native English speakers have better vocabulary than non-native English speakers right like if you're learning English on my channel you came to my channel to learn something it's a high chance that my English vocabulary is better than yours even if my English vocabulary isn't like even if I don't know a million words right it's still probably better and whatever your language is your vocabulary in your language is probably better than mine that's just how it works native speakers usually speak very well and they their pronunciation is perfect and their grammar is maybe it's not perfect according to the textbook but it's perfect according to the situation right like if I say you know ah, there's a lot of uh, you know there's a lot of I was gonna say clouds there are no clouds out here guys there's a lot of trees out here I could say oh there's, there's a lot of trees right is that a grammar mistake I said there is a lot of trees well if there's more than one it should be are there are a lot of trees right but that's that's a mistake according to the book but in reality that's a very common thing that native English speakers say you know there's a lot of uh, a lot of trees there's a lot of birds there's a lot of this there's a lot of that right we, we talk like that and so you know I, I don't know I would uh, sometimes it's hard to identify a native when you're not a native like like there are people that I've I've seen um, let's say well for German speakers usually I can I can 
tell if someone's a native German speaker. But like, let's say a language like Hindi, they're in, see, like in, in Germany, and this is another aspect that's important to understand too. It's important to understand things about that country, okay? Like, uh, I know in Germany, people speak German, right? There are no other languages that, you know, it's not, it's not like you see a German person and you say, huh, I wonder, uh, I wonder if they speak another of the country's languages. No, there is only one language in Germany, and that's German, right? That's the German language, German. There are native German speakers and non-native German speakers, okay? But in a, in a country like India, it's a lot more difficult because you have so many dozens and dozens of languages and some of them are similar to each other and a lot of the people have have gone to school in Hindi and they maybe speak with a really good Hindi accent and uh, but maybe their mother tongue is like Marathi or like uh, oh, what other languages are there I don't know there's a bunch of languages right there's so many like so you know sometimes for me it's hard because if I look at people from India, they, they're two people might look the same. They have the same religion. They've got the same the skin color. They've got the same, like, it seems like to me like they have the same accent. But one is a native and one isn't. <laughs> right? so, it's, so I usually ask people, you know, what's your mother tongue? What's your mother tongue? That means what's your native language? And... Uh, you know, because it's, it's, it's hard for me. So maybe this person, like this person who's asking me in the comment, are you native, a native English speaker? That means they don't know much about Canada. Because what other language would I speak? I was born here. I've said that in my videos. I, you know, like I live here. What other language would I speak? Like by all, by all visible estimates you can assume that I'm a native speaker right <laughs> guys so I would say that person has lost touch with reality but for me if I go to India and I and I'm not sure if someone's native or not because because like I'll, I'll be honest like people who speak like Gujarati they're from the, the state of Gujarat when they speak Hindi they can speak Hindi from my perspective perfectly they speak fluently, they look the same, they, 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 they talk the same, but they're actually, their mother tongue is Gujarati. But they speak Hindi, or, they, you know, it's, Punjabi is another example. The people who I hear speaking Punjabi, they can speak Hindi fluently. And it's like their, it's almost like their native language, even though their mother tongue is Punjabi or Gujarati so like that's why for me it can be confusing and for me it's a lot more confusing than for one of them to identify me as a native speaker because what, what what's the competing language what else would it be like French is a very different language you can hear it very clearly if someone is a French speaker and they're like let's say they're it's, they're a native French speaker and they're speaking English you can usually hear it uh, very clearly. Or if someone is a German, a native German speaker, and they're speaking English, usually you can hear the, di it's a very pretty distinct difference, right? It smells like wood here, guys. I'm in the bunch of building supplies. Kind of like that. I like the smell of wood. Don't you like the smell of wood? <laughs> the guys are gonna probably build a house right there. Anyway, guys, now I'm just walking around aimlessly. Look at that person has a nice balcony on their house. You can catch the nice sun here. I wish I had a balcony on my house. I don't even have a house, guys. I have a condo, not a house. But uh, anyway, guys, so let me know your thoughts on these things. Like, I'm sure for Indians, let me know, okay, if, if you are an, if you are 
from India and let's say you speak Gujarati can you hear if you're talking Hindi to a Punjabi speak to a native Punjabi speaker can you hear in their Hindi that they're a Punjabi speaker can you hear the difference when you're talking to a, a native Hindi speaker I can't I don't know like if I see someone if, if, if someone's speaking Hindi if three people are speaking Hindi to me one is Gujarati one is Punjabi and one is a uh, native Hindi speaker I probably wouldn't be able to tell guys I haven't spent enough time in India maybe if I go live in India maybe if I was lived maybe if I lived with an Indian family maybe if I married an Indian wife maybe I would be able to tell at that point but at this point I have no idea I have no idea guys so I don't know <laughs> it's just kind of a topic of conversation I wanted to do today to talk about that comment but uh, I would say if someone has grown up here you know it's safe to assume that it's pretty safe to assume that they're a native a native uh, English speaker like he, here in I don't know if their parents are from Canada like like my parents right like you like I said this a lot of the stuff is complicated because it you start it starts to enter into like ethnicity you know skin color you know maybe religion maybe you know this and that and so I think it, sh it should be clear by looking at me and by hearing me that I am a native speaker because what else would it be your options are very limited I'm not German you can hear that I'm not German I'm not French you can hear that right because uh, there's the differences are very distinct so um, anyway guys but it's a good comment thank you whoever left that comment uh, you know we're all a little bit out to lunch we've all lost our touch with reality a little bit right so guys uh, anyway thank you for joining me guys I just wanted to walk around and talk about this topic it's a good question thank you for leaving the comment thank you for all your comments guys let me know what's your what's your mother tongue do you think people can actually become perfect in their pronunciation like can they can they can their pronunciation match another country's pronunciation like like if I if I were to learn Spanish could I actually do it? Could I get completely perfect in my Spanish so that I could convince a Spanish speaker that my Spanish was native? I don't know, guys. They'd probably look at me and see I'm not Spanish. I'm not natively from there. And they would ask me, are you adopted? You know, were you adopted? Did you grow up in Mexico? Well, I'd say, yeah, I grew up in Mexico. Well, you don't look Mexican. Yeah, well, what if I was adopted, right? What if a Mexican family adopted me from Canada, right? So, like, you know, th these things can be a little bit uh, <laughs> really hard to... Uh, <laughs> and this is why it's not good to judge people. It's not good to, to, to make, like, judgments on people. Like, it's, it's just nice. You can just ask people, where are you from? What's your mother tongue? Are you a native English speaker? Like, this person was very nice. They just asked me, Mark, are you a native? In terms of your fluency and your speech and your vocabulary, I'm not sure if you're a native, Mark. Well, the answer is yes, I am native. So guys, as always, I love you so much and I uh, hope you're doing great. It's a bit windy and chilly out here. Um, a nice sun is shining, but still it's pretty chilly. So guys, I'm gonna go warm up at home and I hope you're doing great. Guys, hope you're staying safe, healthy and happy. I love you so much, and as always, I'll see you over in the next episode of Mad English TV. Take care.